It's a blustery edition here on Zero Block 30, and I am glad to be back on the show. I think it's only like the second, maybe third time I've missed in all 335 episodes. I think it was only the second, the first being the time before even Kate was with us when you had a heart attack or yeah. thought mm-hmm. you were having a heart attack or some such thing. And you were like, yeah, I don't think I can make it today. <laughs> That's when Erica and Dave were like uh, Marine work ethic just slaps differently whenever yeah. he calls yeah. from the, the hospital and apologize that CBT wouldn't be out on time. They're like, don't yeah. worry about it, dude. Yeah, Don't worry about it at all. But it's been a nightmare. We'll get into that a little bit. But we also have five rounds of the magazine. Round number one, winter weather down south causes more than a dozen military bases to close, including the illustrious Fort McNeely here at my house. I'm excited to tell you about What's been going on here? Round number two, a former Navy SEAL and Special Ops commander who oversaw the raid to kill Osama bin Laden is writing a book. You might think, oh, real original. But what if we told you it's a Navy SEAL book for children? Oh, Oh, that's a fun twist. Uh, Yeah. A little Noah's Ark with a silencer. Got to love that. (laughs) Round number three. One of our allies has been in Afghanistan with us for 20 years now, but just announced they'll be withdrawing the very last of their troops this May. I'll give you a clue. The Kiwis are knackered. That's pretty good. Mm. Was that good uh, New Zealand accent or no? No, you know, New I, Zealand. <laughs> so actually, no, no, no. So actually I was listening to somebody, a, a, a speech coach or a, an accent coach in Hollywood, and they say the New Zealand Australian accents are the hardest ones to do. Oh, I don't oh, doubt yeah. that at all. I mean, in the... But shout out to their prime minister, their prime minister, boss ass bitch over there. She's yes. like relying on science there. I saw something that I was so jealous of. The prime minister was at like their, I think it was like their independence day type of gathering that they had. Like it was a big national holiday and everybody was out barbecuing. They had ribs, they had all kinds of fish and shit on other barbecues. Nobody was wearing a mask. Everybody was having a great time. It just felt like the olden days. Yeah. Hmm. The olden days. The olden way, days. Uh, way back when. <laughs> Speaking of olden days, did you hear the one about the 30 Taliban extremists who uh, that were killed after a massive explosion during a bomb making class? No? Weird. No. Uh, this story is really blowing up online. And finally, round number <laughs> five, Russia is bragging about new flak jackets that will stop 50 cal rounds. Sure, Jan. Sure, Jan. <laughs> There's no way. I mean, who's going to be the first dummy to test that? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> give me give me two Lance Corporals right damn now. Uh, in Russia, probably. <laughs> right. No. Give me a row of them. <laughs> yeah. I did see somebody sent me and they were like, how, well, how do you feel about this? It was this picture of President Putin going to one of their veteran cemeteries and it's like pouring down rain. And Putin walks across in like his suit across this long open area where like to go i guess to their version of tomb of the unknown soldier and it's pouring rain and he goes up there and he just stands there solemnly while there's rain no umbrella or anything and they asked him why he didn't have an umbrella he was like they didn't have an umbrella when they were at war and lost their lives for their country i'm not gonna wear one use one now i was like that's fucking that's i don't want to give <laughs> i don't want to change sides but that's pretty pretty in line with my yeah, umbrella it, policy it's so. like that drill tweet where it's like i take back my tweet you absolutely don't have to hand it to isis mm-hmm. like, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and all of that is going to be brought to you by our friends at bare bottom i was not bare bottom this week while it was cold but i was however wearing a lovely fleece for my friends at bare bottom it made it a little bit more delightful in an otherwise terrible situation they had their stretch joggers which are made from flagship cotton spandex fabric blend that are insanely comfortable and even i and everybody knows that listen to the show or have seen me walk around i have a little bit of what the french call bird legs and yeah. mm-hmm. even in the old bare bottom I still can pull off the a thinner tapered little pant. It's a jogger and I feel fantastic in them. You should get some too, because right now you can get free shipping. If you go to barebottomclothing.com with the promo code zero, you're going to get free shipping on your first order. That's B-E-A-R, not like my county, Bear County, which is B-E-X-A-R. Bear County here is the animalbottomclothing.com and they use the promo code zero for free shipping. Make sure you check out that. You're going to love it. Every, every time I've worn it, compliments compliment city compliments mm. and i love compliment i never get enough listen, compliments. listen i don't know if you guys know this but i would never turn down a compliment never 
Oh, well, I, mm-hmm. we know that concept. Yeah. We do. As, yeah. All right. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've touched on this before. Whether you got bird legs like chaps or you're uh-huh. dragging a wagon, like an absolute wagon, like uh-huh. cons, these uh-huh. pants will fit you. They'll, they'll cons, have you done the TikTok trip where it's like, uh, skinny waist, pretty face in a big bank. Have you done No, that? but I think I should. <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> you should uh-huh. definitely do that. Skinny waist, pretty face in a big bank. I love those trends. No wonder this artillery man has a howitzer on him. I could, oh. oh. Howitzer means penis. Oh. Shout oh. out Tom Brady's son. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. I'm sure you'd, hmm. HR, I'm sure you're great. But... <laughs> What, so we can compliment asses, but not dicks? What kind of world this is society? I don't know. I, don't I think know what she's that. saying is there's no way for her to know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, All right, let's mystery. get into the actual show. Here's some music before we talk about some stuff. All right, so what? yesterday, it's been a whirlwind of a week. I missed the first episode of the week, so it kind of threw me off a little bit. Whenever I saw assets going out, I was like, I don't remember talking about this at all. Like, yeah. I don't remember talking about it at all. But sure. you guys did it. You went out there and you crushed it. And I was very happy with the science section of the last podcast. Mm, we really went in depth in dart. it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Because Carl Sagan, you can't trust him. You can't trust Carl Sagan. No, you got to call I never him will. No, no you shot. You cannot trust him. That little blue dot where he's like, everything happened here. Bullshit. They made that up. They, I think they legit took that picture. It's not from a satellite. They made that in Microsoft Paint. That's a big mm-hmm. cat special. <laughs> yeah. We don't have to believe. There's no, there's no way that that could be true. It's just too impossible to be true. It is and, too impossible to be true, much like Kate's uh, situation that happened yesterday <laughs> at the car dealership. So, Kate, kind of, let's take it back to the beginning, because I don't know if you mentioned on any of the shows the process of you buying a car, because you did trade in your old beloved CRV, which everybody was very disappointed about that you got rid of the CRV, but you found a great deal on a Kia, right? Yeah, a 2019 Kia Sorento, okay? And I went through, I knew it was a good deal. Which would be the newest car that you've ever had, correct? Hands down. Previously, I have a 2003 Honda CRV, and then I had a 2000 Hyundai Sonata. And that was not in 2001 that you got that 2000 Sonata. (laughs) The 2000 Sonata was in 2011. Yeah. Okay, Mm. so I've always had like a decades old car. This is the first like big girl new newish car that i've ever had that has which is a special moment like it when you buy your first nice car there's something about it where you're like shit man like when we went and bought our brand new tahoe i was like fucking it i got a brand new car it smells like a new car it's got all the bells and whistles this thing is nice yeah the only thing that wasn't nice about this car and i found it on if you go through the triple a website they have this car buying system where they'll tell you if you're getting a good deal or not it kind Mm -hmm. of does the kelly blue book stuff for you and it was like this is an excellent deal here's exactly how many dollars it was like thousands below this should have been the first maybe little flag like sometimes you can get those deals especially like a used car because they they just want to get it off the lot yeah Mm -hmm. and it had been sitting there for 149 days and Mm -hmm. so um it's way it's like an hour and a half away down in toms river new jersey by the shore um Cons will know where that is, like south of Asbury Park, whatever. So we go down there over the weekend to check it out. And we figure out what the catch on the car is. It's that it reeks of cigarette smoke. Okay, it reeks. But they promise me there's this like five to eight hour system where they plug your car into all these suction things or whatever, and it can actually get rid of the smell. Mm -hmm. And we all said, though, what really kind of turned the first red flag for the three of us was why didn't they just do that from the beginning before they tried to start selling it? Right. Like if it's been sitting there for 140 days, like for five hours, just plug that bitch in. Yeah. (laughs) Well, my theory (laughs) is that they, it it only had like one other owner, but then it had gotten leased out and returned. And then my theory is that it's where some of the dealers may be repeaters during the day Mm. in the back of the lot or something. Like, I don't know. I had had a smoke car. I think it was the smoke car because so, it was so fr- I, like the smoke was so it was so smoky in there. But they promised me they're like, it's we went kind of later in the day. So there wasn't time to do it that day over the weekend. They're like, bring it back this week and we promise we'll take care of it for you. And that's fine to me. I was like, I'm I know I'm paying less for this car because of this mm-hmm. for whatever the wacky reason. 
I will bring it back to me. It was worth it to save those thousands and thousands of dollars. Like on this car, I was like, yeah, I can deal with that. My dad used to repeaters in the Ford F-150 with me as a toddler next to him all the time. Like, <laughs> like the baby will be fine. A little bit of smoke in the car. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> such a dirtbag thing already. Whatever. I bring it back to, and I loved the car. I, lo- I fucking loved it. I've mm-hmm. been driving it all over the place already. And I'm like, oh my God, it feels well, when so you much go better. from like a 2003 CRV to a brand new car, like the difference is monumental. Yeah. Oh like, my God. I mean, the yes. difference between cars, standard stuff and cars in 2003 and now, like the stuff that was high tech and high end for like a Lexus or a Mercedes, that's just like all standard and, and basically like a backup every car- cam. 2003, yes. you're balling out of control for right. your backup cam. Right. Well, my old right. car too only had a radio and a tape cassette player, and so like <laughs> oh, wow, tape cassette. Yeah. And wow, so throwing that, it back. <laughs> so I'm like, you, I'm like hooked up to the Bluetooth. I'm like, oh my goodness. And I, so I was excited. I woke up yesterday at like seven in the morning to drive down to Tom's River to get the smoke sucked out of it. And they had told me they're like, bring your, your like they don't know what I did for a living or anything, but they're like, you can bring your work stuff and like bring work your pocket for the day. To set it down, dance if you need to. Because <laughs> they knew I was going to be stuck at their dealership for up to like five to eight hours while right. this process happened. So I pack all my work stuff. I pack a bunch of snacks and drinks and all this shit. And I drive down there given I haven't been sleeping at all lately. So I was already, I was like falling asleep at the wheel on the way down there yesterday. I missed my exit by like 15 miles. I was whatever. I had to like drive across New Jersey. I get there around 10 in the morning and I start to, I hand over my car and I start to set up shop to like get some stuff done for the day. And I hear scuttlebutt almost immediately about a car crash on the lot. Like a car has crashed on the lot but nobody says anything to me. And so I'm like, skip it. I'm like, totally fine. I'm not paying Classic attention. Oblivious Kate. <laughs> and then finally somebody comes up to me. Um, one of the workers from like the garage area and is like, a little bit of a bad news. Your car's in a little bit of a fender bender out in the lot, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Oh, I, I look over. And this is like a kind of a bit after I had heard the scuttlebutt about the car crash in the lot. Right. It's like, a, it's like a, after 11 now. And I'm like, Oh, I look out and the, it was bad. I sent you guys It was the not pictures. a fender bender. Yeah, By no, no means it was, a, it just... was a full blown wreck. They had a yeah. full blown wreck in the parking lot. I don't know how they did it. And like me, I, I hate being like, I'm a girl. I don't know how that, but like, you see how rarely I deal with my car, how rarely I buy a car. I just don't understand or know how this stuff works. And that that's on me a lot of it. But I, I, right away, I was like, oh my God, I had no idea what to do. And nobody like, they didn't tell me exactly how at first, nobody offered to take me out to look at it. Um, It was, and I don't think it was nefarious, but I think it was just like. So bizarre that they just had no idea what to do. And like how, that is a tough situation to be in because at the business, you want to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row before you tell the customer like what's going on, like come up with some possible solutions. You don't want you to go up there and be like, we're going to try to figure it out. And then they have to step away for an hour and a half trying to figure it out. Cause then you're just steaming mad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I was a little bit like not shell shocked is not the right word, but I was like, I just really didn't expect it. And I didn't expect the damage. So I go back and I'm like, okay, thank you. And I go back and sit down and I'm like, uh, what the fuck? What do I do? Um, so I send you guys a picture of it. I'm like, holy shit. So then they come out and they're like, we're going to have to send it out to get fixed up, but then we'll get it to you by whatever. And I'm like, oh man, um, that seems like a lot to fix. Like that's a really, the car was really fucked up. I mean, the whole front end was smashed like lights and the bumper and the everything. And the wheel was like scraped off and blah, blah, blah. And meanwhile, so just to give a little more insight, our, our group chat is blowing up and we're all yeah. telling you the same thing. We're like, Kate, now is your chance. You can legally walk away from this car. You don't really want it. We can figure something out for you. And then what happened? And that was the thing at first, Nobody there told me I could walk away from this car. It, well, because they didn't want you to. Right. It, the only option I was being given was that I could come back. They would call me on Friday and tell me like what the deal was with the fix and all that. And no, I, I hadn't even considered resale value that it would fuck the resale value. So I hadn't even thought of that until you guys texted it to me. And now mm-hmm. I'm panicking. I'm like, oh my God. Um, and I, so I'm talking to the guy and I'm like, you know, I, I don't know if I should like walk away from it. And they're like, no, 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 no. The first, like the first guy is like, no, you don't want it. And in my head. I'm like, 
uh, I really don't feel good about this. And I started to panic. I started yeah. to be like, oh my God. And I started to get so mad at myself because I'm such a pushover. And I'm like, oh, oh my God, I know I'm going to walk out of here making the wrong choice and fuck and whatever. And I didn't know there was other, there was like several other options that I could have gone with at first that eventually were presented to me, but weren't mm-hmm. at first. And again, I don't think it's nefarious. I think that's the business. Yes, of course they want you to keep the car, but in the meantime, so now I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm panicking. Cause I think they're, I'm like, I signed all this paperwork. Like, I think they're going to make me keep the car. Chaps goes into action on Twitter, sends out a little bit of a tweet goof unbeknownst to me. And <laughs> yeah, I had, let's make that very clear. Kate did not say, I did. Hey, can you go do this? And in fact, when chaps started to insinuate that she should use some of her uh, what's called popularity or influence to help her situation. She's like, no, no, I don't want to do that. I don't feel comfortable doing that. And chaps ultimately said, all right, well, I'm just going to do what I want. Long story short. And I'm, I, they, first I'm out with the general, like other people waiting for their car stuff. Now, all of a sudden there's like a shift in mood and they bring me back into this, into one of the guys's offices. And they're like, so uh, quick question. What do you do for a living? And I'm like, oh, I work for a site, uh, a sports site. I know I normally don't even say where I work. I say I work for a sports site. I'm a sports writer or something like that, which is a little bit of a lie, but people don't understand what blog or whatever. And they're like, because we're we're starting to get a couple weird calls and stuff like that. Unbeknownst mm-hmm. to me, Chaps had taken to Twitter. I Chaps, I still don't know what you tweeted. I still have never seen it. I don't know what it was. But then. I guess Big Cat picks up the mantle and retweets it to his 1.2 million followers. All of a sudden, the phones start ringing. You know, they yeah, have a lot Yeah, because I put in one of the tweets. I put in, like, I'm not telling you to call, and I put their number in. He oh, put their yeah. full yes. phone number. <laughs> I said, I'm not telling you to call this number and tell them what's going on. But if you feel like you should to protect the two-time Afghanistan combat veteran Marine and pregnant woman who's eight oh. months pregnant, feel oh. free to. And so then that's when it really started to go. So I had no, I'm sitting there and like, eventually probably would have, I would have flipped out enough, like been that I would have figured it out with the guys and some sort of solution. But this. Oh, also, I should, I should mention while all this is going on, I, I made a phone call. I'm very fortunate that I have some, some really good people in my life. And, and one of the, and, and the person I called handles litigation for car dealerships in New Jersey. And he got his uh, partner on a conference call we discussed it <laughs> you legally could have done all of what happened yesterday without any of the hullabaloo so it's like you ultimately probably would have ended up at the same uh end game but it was kind of interesting the way to play it out with the chaps well so i had no idea that and that's why i was like i was like hey kate call me please call me please call me I should have, but I was on the phone with insurance and then, mm-hmm. and my insurance, the first guy I talked to at the insurance company too, got me all riled up. He's like, oh, they're going to try and this guy, Jose, he was like, they're going to try and make you pay for it. Or they're going to try and make us pay for it. You better make sure blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what? Like he did, he wasn't helpful either. He got me like all upset. <laughs> well, he's right. Like they, car dealerships are notorious for just trying to look out for themselves. I mean, that's, that's what they do. But this place hadn't did so far. Like it was so early on in the stages of the quagmire of this thing. I, I had no knew idea. you were going to go opposite way. Since we were ugly to them, I knew you were going to be glowing about everything that they did. Yeah. Now they're the greatest dealership yeah. in the world. I, well, so I, because <laughs> so now I'm sitting in the office. Chap sends this tweet out. All of a sudden, it was like someone called in a bomb threat or something. Nobody called it, but it was like that was the mood of the place. All of a sudden, phones start ringing. And I'm not just talking about the landlines where the receptionists are sitting. I'm talking about people must have gone on the site and looked up every single dealer's business cell phone. (laughs) Every dealer was all of a sudden on their phones. People were running like speed walking, going in circles. There was like beads of sweat on foreheads. They're like, do you know somebody from Fresno? They just called up and screamed Semper Fi into the phone and then hung up on us. And I'm like, oh my God, (laughs) I had, I had no idea. And they're like, did you put something like, what do you do? And did you put, I'm like, I, I, I put the car crash mm-hmm. out there 
but just a picture of the crash car and not even what the dealership was. I didn't want to. And Kyle was the one that did the sleuthing. He went mm. and found <laughs> through the, uh, <laughs> through God one damn of, it, you guys. Through one the of the license plate. The I was weekend. like, I wish I would know what it was so I could go out and blast these people. And then we did it. And I think it's great Sorry. because one, no. like I know that you felt super uncomfortable because that you're not like a very confrontational person in that manner, but one, you're my friend and we care about you. So I don't want you to get screwed over. But two, it's a good lesson to don't do that to people. Like just because you have a huge following and like a platform doesn't mean that they should treat you different. They should do the right thing right away. And that should be the option. What you ended up getting at the end is what they should have done from the beginning. Yeah, ultimately, that, that's my point. Like, they, they shouldn't have tried to skate around what they knew ultimately they could offer you just so they could only offer you what was most beneficial for them. Yeah, in the beginning, it was very like, hey, this isn't that big a deal. We'll get, like, you know, and so I was like, okay, but I didn't feel good about it. But, like, I, I again, I don't think they're being nefarious. I think that's just the fucking business. But, like, yeah, oh, it definitely is. I mean, I, I, I think you're right that it is the business and any mm -hmm. business you look after your bottom line first, but then whenever you realize something else, there's another force behind it. It's a, it becomes a little bit different of how you protect your bottom line. Now yeah. you have to give a really good deal. What you ended up getting to so tell them the deal that you ended up getting. Yeah. Well, first of all, so all these calls start coming in and you're right. I'm not a confrontational person and none of them, they slowly started to be like, Oh, you're with, Oh, Barstool. Oh my God. The it sea, all started making sense. The sea of calls started coming in. I heard somebody in passing say they're making memes about skull fucking us. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm sweating. I have sweat drenched through the armpits of my thing. And the, now I'll tell you the main owner, the guy, Joe Hill, he was like, listen, cause I was like, I'm so sorry that this is happening now. I feel he's like, listen, this is happening because we crashed your car this morning. That's on us. Exactly. I take, I take full responsibility for it. Everything that's happening right now is because of what happened on our lot. There and we're go. going to take care of you. So then the whole, everything switched from there. They sent the top guy in to, they treated me like, they're like, do you need a it salad? It made me laugh when you're like, you they, need a they went from treating me like as just a normal person. Like I was queen bee all of a sudden. <laughs> I felt like I, cause I never use that. I think they right, just right. were, they were so kind. They couldn't have been nicer. And like, they were nice to begin with, but like, a, this was like a whole new level of whatever. And it ended up being, they're like, look online, see if you see any other cars in the lot that interest you. We'll see if we could do some kind of trade, blah, blah, blah. Pat finds, I'm like, Pat, can you look online real quick? Cause I was still on with insurance trying to figure mm -hmm. some things out too. And I'm like, Pat, can you look online? He finds this car that's like actually newer, nicer and more expensive. But what my, the car I had picked, of course, would have originally had been one of the cheapest on the lot. So there wasn't mm -hmm. many comparables. So he finds this car, it's more expensive. And I'm like, well, in my head, I'm already going over. I'm like, can we afford to go up a little more? Cause there's no way they're going to give me an even trade for this. This car is so much nicer than this one, blah, blah, blah. They ended up just being like, nope, this has been a whole hullabaloo, even trade. We'll give you this, this car that you just picked out exact same. You don't even have to write another check. We'll take the one you did. We're just going to flip it. You're good. And so I ended up leaving there with a way, way nicer car. So it worked out for you. And, and I think that's what, you know, I don't think that I'm saying anything really groundbreaking here, but the reason that they were so willing to, to part at, at the same price is because they're still going to make, they still made money on that. At the end of the day, that's what people don't realize. Like, you know, when you go to get a car and the car, you know, the, um, the salesman's like, ah, oh, I don't know if, if I can do this. Like, I don't, I'm not going to be able to put food on my family's plate if, if I go this low. It's all an act because they can mm. always do that. It's the so worst. The That's why I, when I was buying cars over and buying my daughter's car, I was like, that just like, you're not losing money, dude. I'm just going to write you a no. check for the car. We'll be done with it. Take yeah. it or leave it. Yeah. And so they still I made money on, on the, the giving you the nicer car. And I was legit feeling bad. I'm like, they're not going to make any money on this car now. <laughs> exactly. I that's felt what they, so guilty. That's what they want you to think. <laughs> I felt so bad, but they couldn't have been nicer. And then in the end, they were still getting, like, even after you guys took that shit down. And the guy, the guy was like, listen, I don't expect you to do anything or say anything online, but like, we do have 250 people that work here. That's a lot of people who rely on, like, if you could maybe get a, you know, at least put up a good review yourself or something like that or switch things up a little because we have a lot and i'm like oh my god but then by the end a couple of the guys are coming around they're like 
so we got the skull fuck tweet from big cat huh they were kind of jazzed about it they were kind of like, and then the one the guy who crashed my car who was the nicest guy like he didn't mean the guy who crashed my car i finally they told me who it was and they're like well, i gotta oh, tell you this recruit they're like he makes the best pizza here Prez would totally give him like a nine point something. He makes such good pizza. Like by the end, they were talking about David, his pizza reviews and Barstool and like all this other stuff, but they couldn't have been nicer in the end. It was just like, I just, I went to, when I went to test drive that car, I was so stressed out by what was happening. I just pulled into a Perkins parking lot and cried in the (laughs) car. I just sobbed. I was like, I'm ruining this business. Oh my God, I can't. I was like, that's what I said to you too. I said, Kate, you do not have to feel bad about any of this. Don't defend these people. Oh my goodness. And you are, you, at first, you were definitely big mad at us too. Yeah. I was so mad at you guys, chaps. I was so fucking pissed at you. My uh, jaw dropped when I realized what had happened. My jaw like dropped to my chest. And I like, if I was a teacher, I would have like grabbed your ear and been like, Ugh. I was so upset. Well, seriously, now that I think about it, you're probably sitting there and your phone's blowing up with three of us essentially yelling at you. Like, you know, <laughs> no, we weren't mad at you, but we were kind of like, Kate, just please listen to us. And uh, of course you had a million things going on. So you're trying to figure this all out. So that probably only complicated things. Yeah, every few hours, you guys are like, what's the update? And I'm like, I'm afraid to tell you guys now. I'm afraid of you. <laughs> you fucking put me like a puppet on a string down in this place, fucking making me dance in front of these clubs. Uh, yeah. But they real were quick, lovely. Throughout the whole ordeal too, I, call, I called my dad probably at like 1230. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and he was very close to saying like, all right, if I need to, I'll go down to Tom's River. Cause that's not that far from where he lives so you're about to have some backup and he loves screwing with car dealerships and i got a message from old joe too (laughs) i was like like, thanks for looking out for our katie i was like oh yeah (laughs) because he was getting ready to drive there too oh i bet i bet he is fucking heated i would be if like my kid was that pregnant and getting the run around i'd be like oh hell no i'd be on my way in a heartbeat well that's your story <sighs> that's Goodness my gracious. story i'm um, glad that it worked out you have a lovely car now and it's you'll be beautiful around the bambino and just hanging out and you get doesn't smell like smoke it looks lovely so it worked out for you yeah so thank you to that dealership and everything mm. they uh everything they did so great <laughs> well it ends up being like you get a nicer car for seven grand off that's a good deal would you do mm. it again if you knew you had to go through that entire day yesterday? No. Again, no. <laughs> no she's like, no, nah, I, I take, I, I would take the lesser car. Just yeah, I knew, I knew that answer as soon as I saw the Instagram story of you sitting yeah. in front of the Wawa, uh, <sighs> like with obviously <laughs> cry eyes. <laughs> they had yeah. been there for a bit. All right, well, let's get going. You have cry with- eyes. <laughs> you have frozen cry eyes. Yeah, no doubt. Let's get into round number one, which is the weather down here because there's more than a dozen military bases that are stretching from Fort Drum all the way to Fort Hood, Texas, that are closed as large swaths of the country were gripped by freezing temperatures and dangerous weather conditions. In southern portion of the United States, many residents were dealing with freezing rain temperatures. And in fact, it's snowing right now still in San Antonio, wow. which is crazy. I mean, because I've, I tweeted out that this is like a historic event for Texas. It legitimately is. Like there, mm-hmm. this is the first time in the history of Texas that every single county has been under a major storm, winter storm watch. From El Paso all the way to Beaumont, it is freezing temperatures or below. It got down to the real field below 12 degrees below zero in San Antonio. Some parts like right outside where I live, eight inches of snow in Texas in this part of Texas is unheard of. It's just right? unheard of. So aside, if you take, you know, I, I am not uh, a proponent for people dealing with the hardships that they are right now in Texas, but when you take that part away, and you just look at it from an outsider's perspective, it's a historical event. So that that's kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah like when you, you and then you have all these stories that I'm seeing that are popping up on TikTok or Instagram or wherever of people's homes are legitimately being destroyed yeah. and they can't go back because some of these homes are built with older materials. Like I was lucky enough when I was in the group chat, my pipes had originally froze and I was very nervous that they were going to explode. Luckily Kyle has some background and knows a little bit more about construction than I do or than any of us do. And so he was able to see that the type of pipes that I had was good, but there's several other types that are used here. People's like entire living rooms were collapsing on themselves. There was standing water, standing water of three or four inches in houses that were already 
30, 40 degrees and having to deal with that. You can't drive. You can't call anyone. There's nothing. You just watch your house deteriorate and become a value of nothing or know that you're going to be paying out the ass in insurance. Like there's so many things that happened here. And <laughs> it's shocking to me that people don't realize that this isn't something that Texas has to deal with. Of course, it's not a big deal if New York gets six or seven inches of snow because you do it all the time. When there's like three snow plows in the entire state and the biggest state in the lower 48 is ravaged from all kinds of weather, it's going to take a little while to for things to get back online. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, conversely, if, if you had Texas full of snow plows and salt trucks and you spent millions and millions of dollars to have all of these things and never use them, everyone would be crying like, why are we wasting money on this stuff that we're <laughs> be never like going to use? Small fucking police departments in Iowa that have yeah. like an MRAP. Like, what yeah. do you need <laughs> yeah. that for? <laughs> right. But there's there's certain things that we should do. And I can't stand it. it happened. It started happening right away where it's like the political footballing of this issue yep. on the left and right. The governor of Texas, like going on Fox News and saying it's because of the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal is not even a thing. Like that's <laughs> not even, a, that's, it's not even a law. Like how mm -hmm. can you possibly blame that on what's going on when in reality, like they were talking about all the wind turbines and all that stuff. Like this is what happens when you give it out to the lowest bidder and they didn't build the wind turbines with cold weather protection. Like they did mm -hmm. it because it was right. a little bit cheaper and now everybody suffers the consequences. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's been funny to see too, people from the North being like, oh, what what a bunch of pussies, what a bunch of whatever. Um, well, there was like 15 military bases closed down there. Are you calling the troops pussies? Oh, people? how about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you calling the troops pussies? Um, <laughs> but it, it's been absolutely crazy to see, and you're right, the politics of it are absolutely insane. Um, and things coming out of the bases too, like chaps, you're talking about houses with their pipes freezing picture an old uh an old asbestos filled barracks you know that's not mm -hmm. there's uh fort leonard wood video out of fort leonard wood where it's just it looks like noah's ark is sinking or something like the titanic looks like you're in the hallway of the titanic where water is just coming down um we're getting u.s army what the fuck moments was posting things about um dpw will only come fix the heat in the barracks if 15 rooms call to put in a work order so that was so to nuts <laughs> Somebody replied, that's the Fort Hoodest thing I ever heard. <laughs> um, but basically, yeah, Joint Base San Antonio right near you. Um, good fellow Air Force Base, Red River Army Depot in Texarkana. Uh, pretty much everything's down to essential personnel only. And it's really a fucking shit up. But mostly my heart just is still breaking for all the civilian. Like you said, all the stories coming out of people just completely fucked it's insane to give you an idea how bad it was there wasn't a single driver available on grubhub uber eats postmates nothing every single store here has been closed for several days they opened up the hgb the grocery store for just a little while it was completely empty they're out of gas in san antonio and to give you an idea of what it's been like here like our power went out for the first time um sunday night is whenever it went out at like 10 o'clock that night by the time we woke up it was like 48 degrees in the house and we decided like pretty soon in the morning we don't, don't know how long it's going to be back let's get a hotel room so my wife and kids went to the a hotel i stayed here with the dogs and it got down to like 43 degrees in my house like when i woke up that tuesday morning you could see like my breath in the in the air it was really really cold and i'm fortunate to have a new house that has like decent insulation and stuff like that there's people all across san antonio like people are legitimately dying like if here. you're elderly or if you have a baby or if, and another thing too is people's food then spoils in their fridges and freezers. And that's a lot of people can't afford that shit. So this, you're talking about the politics of it. I just want to read this little snippet from the mail of, uh, from the mayor of Colorado, former City, mayor Texas, <laughs> former mayor. Now this is, but this is bananas. Go ahead. Where's Colorado city, Texas. Does anyone know? I, no one knows. Yeah, no one knows. Tim Boyd. This is the former mayor of Colorado City, Texas, Tim Boyd. Of course, his photo is him with his like seven girls or whatever. His uh... Anyway, um, let me hurt some feelings while I have a minute. I hate this man already. Mm -hmm. No one owes you or your family anything, nor is it the local government's responsibility to support you during trying times like this. Sink and I hate, I, I hate to correct here because if you're going to write this type of thing and use a semicolon, you better use it in the correct fashion. 
You can't. Well, he, yeah, if you're going to use a semicolon in this type of email, it's got to be used grammatically correctly. This is not. He should have used a comma there. He didn't need the strength of a semicolon. And I was infuriated it, by that. It was the first of many errors in mm. this post. But go ahead. He says, sink or swim, it's your choice. The city and country, along with power providers or any other service, owes you nothing. I'm sick and tired of people looking for a damn handout. If you don't have electricity, you step up and come up with a game plan to keep your family warm and safe. Which is what I try to do. Whenever it started to snow, I was like, you know what? I got to go outside and build an electrical grid. Exactly. (laughs) You just had to go out, put some wires together. Hey, McCartney, uh, grab a shovel. Let's go. Grab the soldering iron. Daddy's got some shit to do. (laughs) Yeah. If you have no water, you deal without and think outside the box to survive and supply water to your family. You start urinating Mm -hmm. in a filter and you drink your own urine. That's why. Or... Or while you're at it, while you have uh, the work going on that power grid, have the wife start digging that well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're sitting at home in the cold because you have no power and are sitting there waiting for someone to come rescue you because you're lazy is a direct result of your raisin. He's blaming your mama and daddy Mm -hmm. now. Only the strong will survive and the weak will (laughs) perish. He spells perish like a church. Oh, folks, God has given us the tools to support ourselves. Unbelievable folks there, though. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> then you should have put a comma after it. Yeah. This Folks is sadly, die. this is sadly a product of a socialist government where they feed people to believe that a few will work and others will become dependent on handouts. Am I sorry that you've been dealing with a lot of tr- electricity and water? Yes, but I'll be damned if I'm going to provide for anyone that is capable of doing it themselves. This guy clearly worked for the government, doesn't understand what they do, or uh, or, so, or life in general. He has yeah. Colorado clue. City has a population of three thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven people. <laughs> wow, and it's been steadily declining. Yeah. yeah, so he's yeah. probably going to get murdered. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just an absolute. I read it and I was like, this somebody has somebody slept with this man. He's mm-hmm. got kids. Somebody has to live with this man every day. I don't understand how they do it. Um, but yeah, so he also sorry. wrote another post that was after he had to resign after this went out and he was talking about his wife and was like, nobody needed to say those ugly things about my wife. She's actually not a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I can't thank you for clarifying, sir. Yeah. Oh, God. I oh. Just, uh, how, how do you say those things in all seriousness, though? That's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the, the, right off the bat, he's like, it's not the government's responsibility to support you during these times. Like, no, in, in fact, it's exactly what the government is supposed to do. You're supposed to give me electricity. I can't. Yeah, there's give a reason why you pay those taxes. There's yeah. a reason. I, I, yeah, I pay my, my they bills. They don't do it out of the goodness of their own heart. They do it because that's what you paid for. Oh, yeah. my goodness. It's Crazy like, thank town. you so much, ATV, for giving me all this food. <laughs> well, I did give you money for it, but that's, that, that's true. That's true. Yeah, HEB is sick of giving you handouts for money that you're paying them. Uh, so but- you also had a note here of some of the most obnoxious chirps that I got. Easily, some of the most obnoxious were like, uh, "Why don't you have a fireplace?" Because I live in San Antonio, dude. We don't need fireplaces right. usually ever. Like that's a big one. Another one would be like, you don't have a generator. Like I've lived in this house for 10 years. The power might've been out for 10 minutes total in that time. Like it just Mm. never happens. Never. Right. And Texas being on its own power grid like that, like, I don't understand that. Like that one doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There is this weird thing about Texas where they don't want to be like dependent on anyone else. Mm Mm-hmm unless things get really bad like you, it was the same thing with medicaid and that's what when i interviewed dan crenshaw and he was talking about the health outcomes of texas that's why it was so baffling to me texas is terrible about health outcomes mm-hmm. because we try to go it alone like we don't use the federal government nearly enough and maybe you should maybe in situations like that you should have an agreement where oh i don't know oklahoma louisiana the other states that are around you can help you out when you need it mm-hmm. Like to me, that's the important, that's the part about being a union is that you help each other when you need it. Being neighborly and such. I I appreciated though, uh, I I saw a lot of tweet threads of people that were from the North or originally from the North and lived in Texas and kind of trying to be as helpful as possible. And here's all the different things you can do to to stay warm and uh, all the lifesaver type things that they're used to. And and that's, that's my biggest thing. Like the people chirping, it's like, you know, 
everybody's everyone's got a different experience if you've grown up in texas your whole life you don't know what it's like to deal with this level of snow so five inches of snow and this level of cold can very much be devastating and i was definitely yeah. firing back a lot more than i normally do oh we we actually i don't know if we said it on the <laughs> show or like before the show last last episode but we were saying yeah you know chaps isn't actually just joking around he's legitimately angry at these people because he <laughs> is actually going after them pretty hard and saying some not choice words as you, you know? should yeah fuck it I, I have no regrets whatsoever i i make no apologies about what i did yesterday regarding the car dealership and i make no apologies about my poor attitude whenever it was snowing yeah no regrets there you go no yeah kate you better come pick us all up and, and take us for orange for uh frappa yeah oh, shit orange mocha frappuccinos there you go mm-hmm. <laughs> I will. one aspect of this entire ordeal that makes you realize how dependent on like electronics your children are like, and just basically doing anything. Like the power was out for a long time and McCartney was like, well, I guess I'll just watch TV. I'm like, you can't watch TV. There's no power. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I'll play on the Nintendo Switch. There's no Wi-Fi. You can't do that either. <laughs> oh God, I'll just go on my Amazon tablet. You can't do that. There is no power. It needs to have pages or like be physical that you can play with in order for you to do it. Kind of like a children's book. Exactly like a children's book. We were reading some of those bad boys. Which brings us to round number two, everyone. It sure does, yes. (laughs) Man. That's exactly right. What do we have, Kate? All right, task and purpose from James Clark there. Before we get into it, though, did you guys have a favorite book as a kid? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What was it? Mine was The Chocolate Touch. Oh, yeah, of course. The Chocolate (laughs) Touch cons. Well, Yeah, when I was like a a little kid, kid, two of them were... um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and The Giving Tree. Mm, oh, the, the Giving, giving tree, is tree is a good, is a good one. one. If we're going back further where it's not chapter books, I'm going to go with Morris the Moose. Mm. Oh, Morris the Moose is a classic. Oh, brick uh, by brick, I, Morris. I was a big oh, if we're going above those, though, I'm going R.L. Stein, Goosebumps, oh. and, 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 and Matt Christopher. Mm. True. Those are good ones, too. I was a big Tony and the Tomato Soup. I read that book a million times. It's kind oh, what's, of like the- What's that? It's like the chocolate touch, but with tomato soup, she pretty much drowns the whole town. Uh, Ugh, that's terrible. Real, real mm. sad. Anyways, uh, the former Navy SEAL and Special Ops commander who Special Ops, Special Ops, Spesh. Uh, Special Operations commander who oversaw the raid to kill Osama bin Laden is writing a children's book. That's right. Retired Navy Admiral William McRaven will be writing Make Your Bed with Skipper and the Seal, a kid's book that follows Skipper. A seal who finds himself in a Navy SEAL tra- in Navy SEAL training. Oh and no, Bailey Carlin's going to be beside himself. He's going to be beside himself. The idea is being taken. And while it sounds like a delightful children's book, we can't help but wonder if there aren't better or at least more entertaining book titles McRaven could have gone with. After all, this is a guy who's nearly four decades in uniform spanned from Buds to Baghdad, including top level postings, the Pentagon, the operation that killed bin Laden. Um, all that other stuff. So he is definitely a highly decorated. I like the name. Decorated. Make your bed with Skipper the Seal. Come on. I like it too. <laughs> that was a good ta- name. Task and Purpose decided to ask, uh, oh, <laughs> you know, what are some other children's books that if you were making uh, a Bin Laden raid into a children's book, what would you call it? Task and Purpose asked that. Some of the uh, some of the answers were pretty were pretty fun. So I thought we could read a couple of those off. Mm -hmm. The first one comes from Brian Oler, and he says, James and the Giant Breach is what he would go with. (laughs) Adorable. Um, One fish, two fish, red fish, we blew a hole in your compound wall fish. Uh, (laughs) The Very Hungry Military Working Dog. Oh, I like that one. The Tango, the Hilo, the Cairo, the Working Dog. One shot, two shot, headshot, you shot. That's another good one. <laughs> oh, the, oh, the places you'll hide from the United States military. Liberty's web. That's a good one. Where instead of where the wild things are, where the terrorists are. <laughs> um, <laughs> curious oh. Rob O'Neill and the Curious Seal. That's a good one. Yes. <laughs> good night, moon, and hello, night vision. Big no, bad he... ab- abata bot. <laughs> I like that one. Oh, I like this one. Oh, the places you'll blow up. <laughs> Indeed, uh, these seals don't have flippers. Everybody shoots the story. Oh, of the good Benhane. night, boom is good. <laughs> oh yeah, go the fuck to sleep. An actual oh, that's children's actually book. that mm-hmm. works out in, in both realms there. Yeah, so oh, then, oh, oh, I like this one. Go ahead, go ahead. No, you got it, guns. Osama bin Laden and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> everyone poops. Uh, their pants and special forces arrive. So yeah, I think those are some good ones. 
The actual book title, again, Make Your Bed with Skipper the Seal, builds off his 2017 bestseller, which you've probably watched his TED Talk on making your bed. Um, Mm -hmm. It was wildly popular, but Make Your Bed, Little Things Can Change Your Life and Maybe the World. Uh, So there you have it. They've got a badass Navy SEAL writing children's books about seals. I like it. I'm a fan. I do too. I, and it writes itself really. Anytime you have, I think you have to find that lovable character. And when it's a Navy SEAL, that's easy. You have a SEAL doing SEAL things. In fact, one of my first Twitter avatars was um, a SEAL that had SEAL's face photoshopped on it. And it was SEAL SEAL. It was. Like wow. Kiss from a Rose SEAL. Yes. Yeah, I knew what you were going for there. That's awesome. It's a nightmare. I still can picture it immediately, and it's nightmare inducing. Yeah. Yep. So cute, so there's cute little that story. One. All right, let's go on to round number three, which is brought to you by our friends at 3 chi If it wasn't for 3 chi I'm not sure I would have made it the last couple of days. It is what helped me out at night, and also it's been the source of a lot of my late night Twitter threads, including the ones where lately I have been infatuated with the idea of Pangea. I am a big Pangea guy. Just thinking about how big Pangea used to be, mind blowing, right? Like to go from Russia all the way to California and Pangea, that's a long ass way. And I'm Mm -hmm. not sure I would have thought about it. And also I thought about last night, imagine being the first bear that discovered hibernation, that you're like, you know what? I'm just gonna go eat as much stuff as I can. And then I'm just gonna go to sleep. Like, what are the other bears doing? Are they trying to figure it out too? They're like, look at Harold. Harold's fucking lazy as shit. And then the other bear's like, I want to get it on that action. He's just laying down for three months. That's all he's going to do. He's going to wake up when it starts to get warm outside. He's going to have to miss all this. It's kind of sure. like those submar- submariners who didn't know that COVID was happening. They come up after nine months and they're like, what the heck? <laughs> huh? What? what the heck? What? Uh, what the- pandemic? What the heck? What the heck? What? What? What the hell? You can have Delta 8. It's federally what? legal what in, in all states heck? what the heck what i gotta what? wash my hands 20 seconds you can use cannabis and all what different types of different methods from 3chi.com with the promo code dbt 2021 what? what the heck what oh what 21 so? purpose what? what what just go to 3chi.com what where huh? what promo code delta, what the heck what delta eight you're gonna get a, a buzz with a a great body feel what huh? buzz what? 3chi what oh huh? 3 G CBD. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go to 3 gcom and the promo code CBT2021 to get some good stuff for 5% off. Let's head on down to New Zealand for round number three because New Zealand will withdraw the last of their military personnel from Afghanistan in May, concluding a deployment that has lasted two full decades. Now, our government is involved because of what happened on 9-11 and they're harboring terrorists or whatever in Afghanistan. That's the reason why we're that why we're there or we've been there forever. Imagine being in New Zealand. Nothing happened to you guys. Like no, and you're still going for 20 years? To me, yeah. if I'm from New Zealand, I'm even more pissed about that. At this point, you're probably like, what what the heck? What the what the hell? What the like, what are we what? Kiwis, what? what? What the heck? Why do they call us Kiwi? Huh? We're far, far. Whoa, what? wait. That's what? offensive. Because uh, huh? <laughs> some 3,500 New Zealanders have served in Afghanistan since 2021 or since 2001. See, and this is also a thing. Like, you're not withdrawing a whole bunch of people. You've had 3,000 people in 20 years. That's nothing. Wait till you see this next part. This is very few people. Are All right. Um, including some special forces, reconstruction teams, and officer training specialists. However, the deployment has steadily reduced in recent years and currently consists of only six people. <laughs> so they're taking out six people in May. There's six oh, people. Well, yeah, that's six. still important. Let's yeah, it is. Yeah. They got three at the Afghan Officer Training Academy and three at NATO headquarters. And the deployments to Afghanistan have been one of the longest running in our nation. Um, I wish to acknowledge that 10 New Zealanders who lost their life in the line, line of duty and more than 3,500 in ZDF and other agency personnel whose commitment to replace conflict and peace will always be remembered. Defense ministers from Washington-backed allies are likely to meet this week to discuss the future of the 10,000-strong mission um, that is currently there still with the United States. Pretty pretty incredible that they're going, whoa, I just came across that uh, 40 syllable town name. You gonna give that a try, Kate? Well, so I wanted to say thank you to New Zealand, to our allies, even uh-huh. though it may not have been a mighty number. It was very nice of them to help us it's out. It's a thought that counts. Yes. Be providing support. And plus, I feel like 
foreign troops with good accents always added a little fun razzle dazzle and spice mm. to everyday operations for the US troops on the larger bases. Like if you got to work with the Brits at all or the Australians, what a treat. They were so jolly, just a bunch of lads with they had the cargo ship, they got to wear shorts. Mm -hmm. They were building like swimming pools on their ground. Like they were the Italians had legit wine in their MREs. Yeah. Mm, so it was true. always always we fun should... to serve. We should also mention though, it's all relative. We're, we're kind of climbing or not, we're not climbing, but the number is pretty low. What do you guys think the entire population of New Zealand is? Ooh, I know I there's more sheep than people. I think 400,000. Okay. Kate? Uh, 1.2 million. It's 4.9 million. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, the fact that they, they sent 3,500, that's, that's still pretty good considering you only have 4.9 million. I think on any given day, like something like over 8 million people come through Grand Central during non-COVID times, yeah. just into New York City in a day. So more people away, more people here in New York City than the entire country. Um, but I looked up some fun facts about New Zealand. First up, military. Their army, obviously the land component of the New Zealand Defense Force, only 4,500 regular force personnel. That's it. 4,500 an army. That's it. Their Navy, only nine ships and 2,000 people. Their Air Force, their logo is the Kiwi bird. Guess what? The Kiwi bird can't fly. Oh. So I That's thought that was a cute little factoid. Um, and they're not really used for defense. They're mostly used to respond to natural disasters and for like science purposes and to keep poachers away um, out in the high seas and stuff like that. So it's mostly like a very friendly little force. Speaking of birds that can't fly, there's been a lot of videos of birds just like freezing to death in trees in Texas and people just plucking them out because they're frozen. Oh, oh no. I've yeah. seen oh. a lot of, a lot Did of you see the possum post? No. From Louisiana, this possum was trying to get out of a fence, got his little toe stuck in it. And then he came out the next day and a person saw him on the fence and the, it was just like a possum icicle. Yeah, there's a lot of people, a lot of people with kayaks have been encouraged to go and rescue turtles out of the water because they're going into shock and there's like all these frozen turtles floating around like ice cubes mm -hmm. in the ponds. Chaps, that um, reminds me of my favorite D.H. Lawrence poem though. It's about self-pity. I've never mm -hmm. saw a wild thing sorry for itself. A small bird will drop frozen dead from a bow without ever having felt sorry for itself. So don't feel sorry for those birds. I they never feel will. sorry for him. So. Never will. Oh, it cons. A deep, mm. yeah. Mm. Can't feel sorry for those birds. Mm. And New Zealand's the first country to see the sunrise every day, everybody. So if you're having a rough day today, think, you know what? It's already tomorrow in New Zealand. Okay. So tomorrow's coming for me. It's going to be better. Uh, first country to let women vote in 1893, way ahead of us. Okay. We didn't get that till like 1920s, you know, right? Mm -hmm. I had to Google it because I'm a horrible woman. Uh, chaps, take the next one since you make me read numbers all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So it's a, a 40 syllable town name in New Zealand, and it's actually just called um, it's actually just called New York. But the, all those other letters are silent, which is mm, I don't believe you don't mm. realize. I'll give it a try. Tamatawakatanagahanagakoamatamatia. There's Both still more. I win. Oki Tai Tana Ta Ahu. I think I nailed it. You nailed it. You absolutely <laughs> nailed it. And finally, there's no snakes in New Zealand. Okay. Not a single one. Would you so, rather live in New Zealand where there's no snakes or Alberta where there's no rats? Well, so New Zealand has no snakes, but they also have the largest insects uh, in the world. So no mm. thanks. Yeah, there was a dude that I follow this shop um, group on Facebook and this guy was, he has a small shop in Australia and he showed his shop one day. He was like, this is what it's like when you first come into me shop in the morning. And he started doing this video. There was like four huge snakes in there. He's like, every day I got to come in here and rustle out some critters. They come in here at night, they'll get into me souls and they'll mess up everything. In Australia? Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Hard pass. No, I would not want to live in Australia, even though there was a time when I lived in Okinawa and the Australian army was trying to up their numbers and try to get people who had combat experience and dog handlers. They're really going to expand their dog unit. They were offering people like $150,000 a year to move to Australia to start training like their dog handlers how to do it. Wow. I really thought That'd about been, it, but it I turns out 150 say, grand in Australia is not like a shit ton of money. No. <laughs> yeah. But mm -hmm. still, the, the stories and the things you would have seen, it's a beautiful country from what I can tell. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. All right, let's move on to round number four. This one's a little bomb-making class explosion, which we hate to see. At least 30 Taliban militants who gathered inside a mosque to learn how to make bombs and other IDs are dead after a bomb went off during the class. Uh, see, I think that this is one of the only times when it's terrorist goofing and you die, that's one of the only times where it's worldwide accepted to make fun of them. Yes. Yeah, especially if you're making something that you're intending to kill other innocent people, which they've mm-hmm. been doing a lot lately. Mm. Uh, yeah, yep. the death the death toll includes six foreign nationals who were expert mind makers. Were Maybe they not. expert? <laughs> yeah, but their bodies could not be identified because the blast was so strong. Well, Maybe so. Maybe they- I think that's Hank. I think that's Hank over there. I'm not. I'm not sure, but I think that's Hank. <laughs> what do you mean? Like you can't identify their bodies when they're coming in to check them out. They're just like, who's that on the wall? I think that's Hank. <laughs> that's Ricky. That's Steve. <laughs> I thought you were talking about our coworker, Hank. And I yeah, was that's, like, what oh, I thought. that's what I thought too. No, it's just Hank and Ricky. Steven is over there. Yeah. The blast happened at the very, if you go to the middle of Afghanistan and go straight to the very top um, near the border of Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, the explosion destroyed a large cache of explosives. They were also assembled in the mosque. If you're doing bomb class, maybe don't have a bunch of other bombs around, I would mm-hmm. say. Um, yep. The fighters had gathered there to learn how to make the deadly weapons. And it comes amongst increasingly deadly Taliban violence in Afghanistan. I follow pretty much every news outlet, especially like Afghan news outlets direct from the source there. And they have been doing a lot of suicide, uh, bomb and goofing, a lot of murder goofing, a lot of horrible shit lately. So I feel no sympathy for them. Mm-hmm. Um, just recently, they had an IED that was responsible for killing two kids. So good riddance to you clowns. The Taliban says it will continue its violence until the U.S. troops are fully withdrawn from the country. Big mission accomplished by us then. Look at that. I got a feeling they're going to continue it much after we <sighs> leave too, whenever that date will be. Just so I will like say. If you are the one who accidentally set off the bomb in bomb making class, you're probably glad you're dead. You know, you don't want to be the last one standing. True. Be like, That's a big time collar pull uh, moment. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, Whoa. Uh, yeah. Uh, Yikes. Do you <laughs> still get your entitlement for being a martyr if you are the one that accidentally, no. like if it's an accidental blown up, do you still get it? No, imagine. You got to think you'll maybe get half, right? Like maybe yeah. you get the kind of deal Kate did at her car dealership at the end where <laughs> you were supposed to have something, but then they wrecked it a little bit. Their oh. Taliban podcast is going to go on Twitter and be like, you need to skull fuck whoever until so-and-so gets his martyr money. And that's, mm. that's going to... Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. No, imagine you get up to wherever they think they go and you guys, you know, waiting at the door, reading his list, like, oh, oh, Rupert. Oh, yeah, Ooh. sorry. And I got to say that whole <laughs> deal that they make, like the, like the deal that they think they make, I would want that deal. 40 virgins. Give me one nice relationship that's meaningful. Like, I want that. Like, if I'm going to heaven, I want to meet my soulmate. I'd much rather have my soulmate than 40 virgins. How do you know? So your heaven is like super horny. Like, that's like the horniest heaven ever if you get 40 (laughs) virgins. Well, I would say give me a real slut. Just one. Well, we don't slut shame. I'm not. I'm saying that. Give me somebody who knows how to work the balls. Oh, yeah. That'd be that would be awesome. Like like a little twerk something. Exactly. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. Give me a yeah. give me a what that mouth pro. do? What that mouth do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move on to round <laughs> number 5. This one is baffling. I don't think this would ever work ever, um but there's an article on Mashable and Popular Mechanics that talks about a Russian state-owned military development company called Rostec and they recently unveiled a body armor prototype that can apparently withstand a direct hit from a 50 cal For those scratching your heads, a 50 caliber bullet is a pretty big deal. And the one that Rostec offers too is the variant used by the M2 Browning heavy machine gun, the 50 BMG. Still not clear enough for you to put it in layman's terms. The 50 BMG is much larger than bullets used in typical handguns. I mean, that is an understatement. They really put it (laughs) in terms for us. Now I understand. So a 50 cal, to give you an idea, like typically if you put your, if you, aren't familiar with them if you put your hand out like you're doing the hang 10 sign like with like the surface hang 10 sign from tip to tip is about the length of what a 50 caliber round would be Mm -hmm. um and then a normal nine round nine nine mil round would be about where you're like the last little knuckle on your pinky it's not too much longer than that so the difference is enormous like when you're talking about the projectile that comes out of a 50 cal it is big it's like an inch around 
you use that like on convoys. If you have a 50 cal mounted on your thing, you would use that to shoot through the engine block of another vehicle to stop it. Like you could stop vehicles with this thing in like a heartbeat. So yeah, they're yeah. pretty powerful rounds. So to think that they could build this, I don't know. Did they show it, Kate? Did they actually show scroll it? Scroll down the it? sheet, scroll down the sheet a little bit. I put a picture in here. It's yeah, called, it looks pretty futuristic. They I call mean, did it, they show it, get it in shot? Did you see any videos of them shooting it? Because no, the, and it does look like something that was very popular in 2007. There was, uh, tell me if you guys remember, it was called Dragon Skin. Do you guys remember mm -hmm. Dragon yes. Skin? Yes. Dragon oh. Skin was a huge deal. And it, it's essentially like body armor that looks like dragon skin. It was like a plate that you put inside your plate carrier and it had multiple different levels or like where different impact zones were different levels of thickness where they said that normally on a typical bulletproof vest or a bulletproof plate or bullet resistant plate that you could do one, maybe two rounds before it lost its structural integrity. Dragon skin was supposed to be able to take like a whole magazine of rounds before it was really fucked up. Yeah, this is this kind of looks like if you look at it, it kind of looks like snake scales or dragon it skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's poly polyethylene fiber and armor plate, and it's supposed to be lightweight. And they're saying, yeah, it can withstand a 50 cal. So now it's interesting you say lightweight because I'm looking at this picture. And if you told me, oh, put this on, it'll stop a 50 cal. I would say, no, thank you, sir. Because this doesn't even look like it could stop a punch. Yeah, it doesn't look like it can do any. It looks like fake cosplay. And yeah. this story came to Mashable looks and came cool, to Popular Mechanics. Yeah. It looks cool as shit. Yeah. But it came to them from Russian state military news so yeah but it's so good just have one of their lance corporals come out and just get shot in the in the chest with the 50 cal see what happens i mean out you put that on like if russia comes out and they're like look we're gonna have a pay-per-view you can pay five dollars and watch somebody take a a 50 cal round to the chest while wearing this for the very first time i'm tuning in i'm paying I'm absolutely paying. Yeah. Uh, but of course, you know, the news ends with them saying this is basically Russia just lying because that's what they do. Um, they're yeah. still nowhere as advanced as as what they're displaying. And so basically it's like us, the USA, like our military telling Russia, hey, we have um we have a magic freezer gun that can freeze everything your whole country. We're not gonna show you, but we have, like just know that we have it. So oh yeah, I know I totally have a girlfriend. She just goes to a different school. Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't know her. <laughs> you don't know her though. She's she's got she's she's like super tits. hot. I actually so did hot. that once whenever I was little. Like I <laughs> when I was I think I was getting ready to go to high school or I might have been yeah, I was just in high school. I came back to Jacksonville to like hang out and I had used this, it was almost like one of those pictures that come in your wallet, you know, like yes. it was, <laughs> it was like the one that comes with the frame. Mills. Yeah. <laughs> and I showed the girl that I had a crush on named Jenny Livingston. I showed her a picture of this other like stock photo. I was like, Oh, this is my new girlfriend. She, <laughs> she lives in Pensacola though. Like you obviously you don't know her, but we're pretty close. So. <laughs> She's the model. You'll see her in every frame at Kmart. So yeah, yeah. hold on. Yeah. Uh, get the newest Seventeen magazine. I think she's in there. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. No biggie. No biggie at all. Bold move. Bold move. That's what Russia's doing, essentially. Pretty much. Yep. That's classic Russia goofing for you. All right, let's move into some safe rounds and alibis. I'm going to start this week because there was a thread that I came across by a woman named Lauren Lori Voss, and I thought it was awesome. We had President's Day was on Monday. And she apparently is like a presidential historian and she has all these different tweet threads about the presidency. But she did one for President's Day where she did a fun fact about every single one of the presidents who have been in office because she said she has read a biography about each one. I'm going to go through some of my favorites here because some of these stories I never really heard of or I hadn't heard in this way. First up is George Washington. She says that he lost nearly all of his teeth, had a terrifying spring-loaded 18th century dentures that were in constant danger of jumping out of his mouth. He mumbled through all the speeches because he was terrified to open his mouth too wide. That, like, that, open up that, your bitch-ass mouth. Listen, no, but that's that's a <laughs> rational fear. Think oh, about, for if, sure. It happened imagine, to Trump. Like when yeah, Trump would, yeah, when, right, when his yeah. dentures would start coming loose. And to yeah. somebody else, somebody on the Democratic side too. It, 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 there was the 
two debates in a row where one on the Democrat, their dentures yeah, yeah. all out, and one on the Republican. I forget and it was- who it was that was a Democrat, but you're right. Like that. I mean, that's just an old people thing. When you're like in your 70s, if you have dentures, they're going to come loose. Like Trump's yeah. out there giving 90 minute, two hour long speeches. Those dental gummies, like that glue's not meant to last that long. That's a lot of talking out there. So it's no disrespect for his dentures, but you would think with that amount of money, you can get the screw in kind, right? Truly. I would get the screw in kind. You would think if you led an entire revolution, you could have top of the line dentures, but Mm -hmm. I guess- I mean, if Marty Mush can get it, President Washington should be able to get it. True, true. That's all I'll say about that one. Next up is John Adams. Everyone thought that he was a prudish, entitled, arrogant little jerk, including all the founding fathers, especially his closest relatives, and extra especially Jefferson. They did hate each other. And John Adams, if you've never watched the HBO series on John Adams, John Adams seems like a little cunt. He just like uh, he just seems like you would hate him. Thomas Jefferson was also an asshole, died completely broke after a lifetime of living on borrowed money and outside of his means. He tried to save things at the last moment by selling all of his books to the state. He died the same day as Adams, which I believe was on uh, July 4th. It was Independence Day. The day hey. that he died. Um, Imagine uh-huh. he's just standing on the street corner trying to hawk his books for a nickel or whatever books cost back then. I got mm-hmm. the chocolate a... touch going for uh, <laughs> five bucks. What a sad demise that is. This next one was fascinating to me because you don't hear much about old Martin Van Buren, right? No, like he's not one that's talked about. Like, in fact, I would say if you're not like much of a history buff, Martin Van Buren comes on Jeopardy. He, after he is the answer, who is Robert, who is Martin Van Buren? That's one of the, you said, I didn't even know that was a president. <laughs> like you would just forget like uh, Rutherford or, B. Hayes is like but, another one that you forget was a president. The, 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 the thing I knew about Martin Van Buren was courtesy of Seinfeld and the van buren boys and i'm making a reference mm. that maybe a lot of our listeners not are not even <laughs> getting but yeah no that's fine but he initialed his documents with his nickname which was old kinderhook now remember kate when we did the chaps and kate show a while back we had that story from world war one about the little girl who had the kitten named kittenkins yes i would love to hear a story about martin van buren and his cat named kinderhook Kinderhook. I think that would be an incredible buddy buddy cop. But old Kinderhook, thus furtherizing the popular expression, oil correct, which is now the expression for okay or okay. Like that, like okay used to mean oil correct. Did you guys know that? No. I, I've heard multiple versions of where okay came from that were, are all very different. But um, yeah, it, it stood for something that got stamped on a lot of shit during wartime, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple more that I want to go through. I won't go through all of them. But William Henry Harrison, he was only in office for 31 days before dying. He didn't die from the flu because he didn't wear an overcoat. Have you heard that r- rumor that he was yes. like he was a hardo and didn't want to go out because it was Hard-o. super cold? Yes, on his didn't inauguration. Yeah, but he actually got the flu a couple of weeks after inauguration, and he died because he worked himself legitimately to death. Like they, there were stories about his chiefs of staff being like, "You can't work nonstop," and he legitimately worked himself to death after just 31 days. If you're listening right now and you're still alive, you're not clearly you're not working hard enough. Sorry. Yeah. That's Check true. your work ethic at the door. <laughs> Probably the best death of any president uh, would be Zachary Taylor. Typically, if a president dies in office, it's a sad thing. Like where you have JFK getting shot through the dome by Ted Cruz's dad. That was bad. Like, right. You, you mm-hmm. also have like, uh, Abraham Lincoln getting shot through the face at while he's just trying to take in a little bit of a play. That's a bad one. Zachary Taylor. Do you guys know how Zachary Taylor died? Choked on a ham sandwich. No, close. Very good guess, Kate. But he actually died 16 months into his term after drinking raw milk on the hottest day of the year. Oh, Oh, milk was a bad choice. Milk. (laughs) I mean, who just goes the hottest day of the year? You're like, oh, I need some of that milk. Don't even pasteurize it. Give it to me straight from the cow's tit. Yike, Roonies. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't know that. Didn't know that. Mm. And I had never heard of this one, too. I actually want to get into this one because this one's pretty shocking. It's from Abraham Lincoln. Abraham is, ha, I'm on a first name basis with him. Abraham Lincoln yeah, is one of those stories. Everyone essentially knows what happened. 
I had no idea what she alleges is true. I don't, I haven't looked into it, but she says Abraham Lincoln gets all the credit for freeing the slaves and winning the war when he was actually super racist and wanted to deport all the freed slaves to Africa after, and winning the war was basically all Ulysses S. Grant. Hmm. I, feel I had like never we heard should, that. We should research that. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anybody from Abraham Lincoln's family is going to be like coming on the pod to like dispute it. Like there's nothing that you could. I do want to look into it because that's super interesting. If you give like that hero title and they might not have wanted it that way. Uh, and you could history does do that in a lot of ways. Like history will eventually change. Like if enough people hear a certain story. So it is interesting to hear like what actually was going on. Same thing with Aaron Burr. Like, you know, because of Aaron Burr, he was never president. So he was always looked at as like the bad guy in his duel with Jefferson. Mm. But it turns out Aaron Burr is a pretty good dude. Hmm. Not according to the history books. Yeah, not, not according, according to, to the, the old history, history books. books, for sure. And if yeah. he did something super problematic, I cannot be held responsible for that. She also gives the title of the horniest president to JFK, which should surprise nobody at all. Uh, but I think Billy Clinton would have something to say about that, too. You give him, you give him a run for right. his money there. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to check out that whole tweet thread, I thought it was an incredibly interesting thing. And how about that? Having the knowledge inside your brain housing group to go out and just give a little snippet about all 45 presidents. Impressive. About each of them. I want to sit next to you at the bar. Basically. Mm -hmm. is what oh, that would be down. a great bar conversation. Tell me about the time that Lyndon Johnson pulled out his dick and told everybody its name. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's my say, Browns. <laughs> Let's go up to Kyle. What do you got? <laughs> First, I have two. One, if you can't have a good day unless you make your stupid fucking bed every morning, you need to reevaluate what you're actually doing with your life. If your first this is day, the least staff NCO statement I've ever heard you make. I'm sorry, <laughs> but if you're going to start your day by wasting time fixing something you're going to destroy in like 16 hours anyways, do something else. I will uh, say, I don't care about the looks of a bed, like the way a bed looks whenever you're done, unless like people are coming over. But the difference of crawling into a made bed at the end of the day versus Huge. one that's not is yes. monumentally different. Yeah, I, I agree. I would, in my house, if, if the bed's not made, the commander gets upset. Yeah, and so you I, go, I, I, I mean, you're at. watching Netflix at the end of the day. <laughs> the kids go to bed. You turn on the TV. You turn on a thousand pound sisters to see what Tammy and Amy are getting into. <laughs> How many sodies they have? Yeah, oh, just yeah. crushing a couple sodies. I'm, I'm nervous about Tammy. I think she's going to die. I mean, when she was at uh, 600 pounds, got news. 600 they're all going to die. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, 600, she was 600 pounds, went to the doctor one month later, 650 pounds to gain 50 pounds in a month when you're already 600. I try to do the math on one of those uh, calculator apps of what you have to do to gain a certain amount of weight in order to gain 50 pounds from when she was 650 pounds. Guess how many calories she had to eat in a day? 40,000. 48,000 calories. Oh my a God. Day. What? She, she did. She did the meal program where they send 30, like your meals for a month. They give 32 meals. That's supposed to be her meals for like half a month for lunch and dinner. She ate half of them in one day. How she do you pay 60, for this shit? 16 shit. meals in one day. How do Holy they afford shit. this? A they lot got of that times learning when you're channel that overweight, money. it's a government program like that'll help you get back in because the government will make their money back if you get more healthy. Like so, if you're incredibly over overweight, you, there is government programs that are designed to help you like have a healthy diet. But they dropped it off, and she ate 16 of the 32 meals in one day. One I'm day. not even mad. That's impressive. That's like, impressive. how do you even swallow that much? You don't. I don't know. You where, just... do, where do you where do you have room? I guess you've expanded your stomach so much at that point that it's much bigger than the average bear's stomach. But and I wow. want to sit down. I need to have this actual conversation, and I want to be like, explain wiping to me. Oh, like, how does you, this work? You can't. You they probably pop... have some sort of device that they just. Oh, I think they just on. let it ride. I think there's just. Oh. All, I mean, there might be a. Mr. Yeah. Happy just hanging out in them cheeks and she would never know. Yeah. Yeah. I agree 100%. Thing. Yeah, there's just turds in there. You just open the cheeks and spray it out every now and then. I'm obsessed with that show on mm -hmm. uh, Discovery and I'm also obsessed with Plathville. Oh, yeah. Have, oh, you, wa 
Platteville is incredible. It's about this super conservative um, family that like the, some of the kids are growing up and moving out of the house and it is drama. If you like religious a little bit of drama, conservative, yeah. religious Ooh, okay. conservative from the South, it's very, very good. Hmm. Yeah. And the kids are all the, the, once they turn 18, they all get super horned up and they, they oh, dip, big horny, big horny. They <laughs> yeah. are big. Ooh, horny. Huh, big they're horny. doing it. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, all right what else yeah. Kyle? Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah do something else besides make your bed oh yeah <laughs> yeah uh, and then last thing so it's kind of late <laughs> but i realized like talking to chaps about his pipes in his house people don't understand how pipes in a house work or like why it's i never bad when will they freeze so you can if your pipes are going to freeze you can flush the water out of your pipes in your house and all the videos of living rooms collapsing is because the pipes have frozen, obviously. They burst. All that ice came out. Now it's thawing. So if, you know, the next time there's a deadly freeze in Texas that lasts a week, when you know it's going to come, just turn the water off to your house and then but, run your but hot But that water. was the thing here. They never said it was going to happen. Which... Like all these, all these news places saying that it was going to happen. My projected snowfall at my house was a dusting i got six inches that's it, like it, it just wasn't on the forecast at all yeah but uh yeah if you're gonna if you want to flush your pipes out this goes for new people in the north as i'm sure uh you know people nothing like there. a surprise six inches and flush i had never out. even heard because i'm a florida boy i had <laughs> never heard of pipes bursting until i first moved to san antonio and it was another cold snap that came through and it was like it was only like 25 degrees, but because this was an older house that we lived in, the outside water um, spout froze and it like mm -hmm. exploded and I could hear it outside. I was like, what the fuck is that? And I go outside and there's water going on. I was like, what happened? So I called the plumber. He's like, oh yeah, your pipes froze. And I, <laughs> I'm being a Florida kid. I was like, they did what? That, yeah, what? That's a yeah. thing? <laughs> like, I, had, I had a Marine from Florida who had just shown up to North Carolina and he called me and he's like, I'm going to be late coming in. I'm like, why? He's like, there's all this weird shit on my windshield and I can't get it off. <laughs> and so I sent my corporal Aww. to the barracks to help him out. And Corporal Reno, one of the best Marines I ever had, is like, this is fucking frost because it's cold. <laughs> you need a scraper or just start your car. Or your car it. has a crazy little button you can press. For right. this very well, situation. you don't think about it. Like yeah, I had to take one of my kids' before. friends home the other day when it was, it, there was ice all over the windshield and getting in in Texas, you're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, because it just yeah. never yeah. happens. I've yeah. seen a lot of videos of people down South using spatulas and shit. Cause they just I use a spatula. Have... Yeah. I, yeah. I used it the other, like two days ago. Yeah. Man, it's crazy oh, times. And so, yeah. the fact that it's lasting so long too. Yeah, it's oh, still snowing yeah. right now. It's crazy. Cause usually if it happens, like if it happens down here, it snows, it might stick for like an hour and then it's gone at least the next day. It's still like hanging out here. Yeah. That's when you know it's cold for sure. Yeah, but luckily it Monday it's supposed to be 75. So that'll be get everything Phew. nice. That'll be Thank I'll God. be very appreciative of that. Cons, what do you got, pal? I got a few buckle up uh, as we were recording. It came across the old wire. I, we always say, wait, Bob Dole, he's still alive. Uh, it was just announced he has stage four lung cancer, unfortunately. So that mm. sucks uh, for Bob Dole, unfortunately. Um, Colonel Bob Dole. Colonel, oh yeah, excuse me. Colonel Bob Dole. Um, number two, Chaps, our, our uh, friend over there at Terminal Lance, Max Uriarte, did a mm -hmm. cartoon of you. And I must say, I thought it was mean. I think he sold you short. He, he made you all, no. yes. He he oh, made very your... kind. No, I thought it was really no. good. I thought it no, was good. No, no, you guys, come on. Chaps has much broader shoulders. He doesn't that have is a... true. I do have broad shoulders. He doesn't have a belly that big. Thank I, you, Con. He, he he they made the way he looked in the cartoon was kind of sheepish. I as, mean, I as will say. say you're I absolutely like right. I've I got fat shamed a lot. Like, oh, they're like, oh, you're fat. You should be able to. I'm not fat. I weigh like 195 pounds. I'm yeah. under 200. I'm not fat. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, I, I just thought he sold you a little short. It's very nice. The, the, the cartoon, the face was on point. It was handsome and what have you, but I just thought he sold you short. When I saw it, I thought if you would have told me 10 years ago when I was still in that Terminal Lance would be drawing me, 
I would have been like, pretty. whoa, that's pretty fucking badass. And now mm-hmm. that Sick. Max and I are friends, still pretty cool. Because I think Max is like the OG social media Marine for right. sure. I think, yeah, I think it's really cool. I think he did a great job. I think he did you a service by cutting it off at the ankles. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. I, <laughs> I told that. him that I would do, because uh, he's doing all these, he did a really cool, like short cartoon story about a grenade yeah. that came out. It was called Frag Out a couple of weeks ago. And I told him that if he ever need voiceover for a recruit, that we would do it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. I would love that. He oh, also yeah. has a new book out that you should check out. Um, it's it's pretty incredible. Like the drawing that he's doing now, it's really cool to see people that you form a relationship with in this job, like really continue to step out and press themselves. Like to go from doing just the comic strip that has like four or five slides on it every week to now attempting to make a full length animated picture about life in the military is really incredible what he's doing and like his desire yeah. to be a great artist. I, I have a lot of respect for And he's about to be a daddy. He is. That's right, yeah. I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, uh, you, okay, it constant? no. Um, sorry, uh, so last night uh, I was, um, so obviously because of everything that's going on, I can't go to mass, I can't go to church like in person. So every week I, I do mass. I just, I do it on my, uh, my laptop. I watch oh, uh, Ash and... Wednesday. What'd you do for your ashes? Well, I didn't get ashes because there was nowhere around here that was offering ashes, unfortunately. Sinner. But, uh, so, but when I, when I do mass, I put my phone on silent so I don't get any notifications, but because I'm watching on my computer, I have my iMessage popping up and I'll just say you guys were sending inappropriate things that I popping up on my screen while I was mm-hmm. doing Ash Wednesday Mass. So thank you for that. And then well, finally, hey. finally, I'd like to announce we are going to start a, a new segment here at Zero Blog 30 called Politicians. They're actually pretty dumb. Mm-hmm. Our pal. No, excuse he's me. Not, not our pal. pal. No, he said, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Sorry, that was just a vernacular that I should not have used. <laughs> uh, Senator Ted Cruz, Okay. Getting caught when your state is going through a generational situation and you get caught uh, getting on a plane to Cancun. Uh, you know what? Maybe your wife had this plan for weeks and your, your, your trip was non-refundable. But you have to know that even with a mask, that probably people will still recognize you and we have these crazy things that are always with us now. They're called phones. And on the phones, there's cameras. How do you not know that people are going to see you, take a picture, post it online, and then the subsequent fallout for that? Mm-hmm. How, do you, hashtag, how does that not Ted happen? Fled. Hashtag yeah. Ted Fled is trending right now. Well, one is that you don't care. Like, you don't, yeah. you don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, that's, I, I think that that's part of it. Like, whenever you're elected for six years and you just got reelected, what's nobody's going to remember that you know next care. time it like yeah. bounce around like you just don't give a fuck mm-hmm. yeah and like his statement of there's not a whole lot i can do dude, you're the fucking senator lead yeah that, that's that ultimately my, that's my point like show some leadership do do just being there is, is better than getting on a plane to cancun that, that's the stop step saying in the right like direction. all this green new deal like it's the paris accord it's all this shit Republicans have been in charge in Texas since 1976. There's never been, since 1976, there hasn't been a single Democrat statewide office in Texas. It's not like the Democrats' fault. <laughs> like it's not, I'm not saying it's Republicans' fault yeah. either, but I'm saying like the cast blame when this is going on, insane. Like that's yeah, crazy. No, regardless, so we talk about all, all the time in the show, you know, you know, the tenets of leadership and, and one of the main tenets is taking ownership and, and mm-hmm. saying that even when, Things are seemingly or, or may not be your fault. And certainly mother nature is out of your control. It, it doesn't matter. You still take the ownership. You still step up and say, hey, I'm going to lead from the front. And that's just a huge failure by old Cruz there. So yeah. politicians no are actually dumb. Actually dumb. Kate? Nothing. I got nothing. There you go. I'm glad you have a, a nice new car. You still haven't sent us a picture, though. I want to see it. Yeah, I want to see it. Yeah. The old girl. Yeah. I'll send you a picture. It's smaller than the other one, but that's okay. It's nicer. Encore or Enclave? I don't know the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course you don't. I'm it brand. was such a whirlwind. I don't know what this car. I don't know what this car is. It's a Buick. It's a Buick. 
Uh, I would imagine it's an enclave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those those are, nice. And that, those are nice. Those yeah, are really it is nice. nice. All right, that's it for this week. We'll be back hopefully at a new normal week on Tuesday. It's on the retreat.